Hi everyone, welcome to another virtual walking tour. My name is Jared and today we're going to be talking about Lauren Harris, Brantford's most exceptional homegrown artist. Behind me is the W. Ross McDonald School for the Blind's open field, a field where Lauren and his friends would come to explore and play together. This area, among many other historic buildings, are where Lauren would spend his formative years in the city of Brantford. Come on, let's go take a look. Lauren Harris's grandfather, Allenson, was born in Ingersoll, Upper Canada on April 1st, 1816. He was an operator at a sawmill in Boston, Upper Canada, which is now the Norfolk Township, which was owned by his father, John Harris. Allenson married Mary Morgan in Mount Pleasant in 1839. In 1872, at age 56, Allenson and his family would move to Brantford after finding some success with their foundry in the Beamsville, Lincoln County area. Brantford is where he would form the A. Harris Sons & Company, a farming machinery manufacturing business. Allenson's father and son, both named John, are credited as inventors of the revolving hayrick and the light binder respectively with Allenson. Creativity and imagination were evident in the Harris family. Lauren Harris was born on October 23, 1885 in Brantford to Thomas and Annie Harris. He was born on Chestnut Avenue, now Dufferin Street, and was raised in the house he was born in during his infancy. Shortly after Harris was born, the family moved to 150 Brant Ave, the location where most people know as Lauren and his younger brother Howard's childhood family home. Lauren and Howard were mischievous children, which became evident through the documentation of Lauren's daughter Peggy. In her book, Personal Reminences, she mentions the time the brothers would sling mud balls at clean, clothesline laundry of a young 23-year-old, eventually famous poetess, Pauline Johnson to their eventual detriment when they were caught and paddled with a stick by Johnson herself. Lauren was confined to his bedroom for what seemed like endless hours where he would fidget. His high spirits ultimately found expression on paper. He studied people, he sketched and painted, he loved to read, he enjoyed music. With his brother, he played games and puzzles and together they partook in practical jokes. Also documented by Peggy, which she learned growing up was Lauren's first experience with paint. Lauren received a set of watercolors in little cubes of such pretty colors that he ate several of his favorites, treating them like candies, which resulted in him becoming violently ill. Lauren had many relatives live near him and his neighborhood too. His cousin Lloyd lived right across the block where the BCI parking lot currently lays. Also his grandparents, Allenson and Mary, lived a short distance away too, at 127 Brain Ave, which is now MMMC Architects. Lauren's father, Thomas, became ill in 1891 with Bright's disease, an inflammation of the kidneys that results in horrible sickness. Thomas traveled much of North America searching for a diagnosis, which was finally made three years later. In August of 1894, he went to a special clinic in New York City, which had been treating patients successfully since 1890, but because Thomas's diagnosis was made so late, he died on August 30th with his wife and brother Elmore at his side. The boys would have to face the loss with their extended family back in Brantford. Soon after Tom's death, Annie wanted to be near her parents, so she and the boys moved to Toronto, where Lauren would grow in skill as an artist, commercially and in popularity when he and six other renowned Canadian artists formed the Group of Seven a collective whose sole focus was to create uniquely Canadian art with the emphasis on being true North. A.Y. Jackson, a member of the Group of Seven, remarked, He was always for a Canadian school of painters. Everything was for the country. He didn't want anything for himself. Lauren lived only his first decade here in Brantford, but it set the tone for the rest of his life. And as shown, it was a refuge during a time of personal crisis even though he never returned to stay after that respite. Lauren Harris died on January 29th, 1970, four months after the death of his second wife, Bess. Harris posthumously was awarded the newly created in 1967, Order of Canada. Lauren's and Bess ashes were scattered at the grounds of the McMichael Art Gallery in Kleinberg, Ontario. A quote from Lauren Harris is an apt way to conclude this video. The arts epitomize, intensify, and clarify the experience of beauty for us as nothing else can. <laughs>